My name is Yumi Odom. I'm the founder and president of the East Coast Black Age of Comics Convention, Xbox Incorporated. And we're here at the Philly Capital of Black Indie Comics Exhibit, sponsored by Xbox. The purpose is to demonstrate how Philadelphia is that capital from 1947 up to the present, uh, with a huge leap between 47 and 1990, but Ekbach and Philly would still hold that title. So many people did not know that Philly was what it is. We have a host of artists here, creators, writers, who came from Philadelphia, live in Philadelphia, but have taken this concept of Black Age of Comics around the world. Well, a comic book in general is, is sequential art, using art and storytelling to tell a story about a superhero, superhero and a character, protagonist. Um, it can either be comical or it can be a serious comic book. Well, indie comics is really more about not being corporate comic books. They're corporate companies and then most indie comics come from individuals who made their own companies and their own comics and characters. The Black Age in particular was started by Turtle Only in Chicago. Um, and before I founded Ekbach, I reached out to him to ask him if I could use the name Black Age. Of course, he said yes. Um, had he said no, this would be called the Pan-African Comic Con or First World Comics Convention. It just had to do with coming from an African aesthetic. It was already here, the Black Age concepts, um, using Black indie characters. Um, but part of Ekbach was to link those people who were in Philadelphia in particular and then around the country to kind of connect and produce products that focused on what we thought of as black age or black indie comics, which meant that whatever you were doing came from African history, mythology, folklore, and you turned that into a story that anybody could read. Of course, we have all Negro comics, um, Orrin and George Evans and their crew that created this in 1947 with just one issue, but then there's a huge leap in between up to 1990, we have younger people coming out. Reggie Byers was one of them here in Philadelphia. Um, David Sims, his family, Dawood Anyabwile, uh, a whole bunch of people who were here. So Orrin and George Evans created All Negro Comics number one, and their focus was to introduce what they've been seeing in the other comic book companies uh, characters that represented the people who created them. And so they made Lion Man, they had a detective in the series, and then they had also some comical kinds of characters, some mythological characters, and that was their first book. So it was an anthology. Superhero story, mini stories, comic story, detective story. Part of why they did this is because, of course, in 47, there was segregation. So they saw in their heads there was white comics and then there was no black comics. So they made a black comic, and that was all Negro comics. In the exhibit, you go from 1947 to 1990. There was a huge split because early on, if people knew the history, um, the brothers complained that the corporate companies would not allow the publishers to sell them pulp to make another book. So there's only one comic book, one all Negro comics. And so from 47 through 1990, there really is not too much. Although Reggie Byers had a comic in 1985, it was Jam Quacky, I think it was. Yeah. And so Jam Quacky was more comic, comical comic than superhero comic book. And so the first one that you get after 1947, superhero related, is Brother Man. That's in the exhibit. And that's the Sims Brothers, um, Dawood Anyabuile and his brothers. So part of why this exhibit has that as a title, Philly, Capital of Black Indie Comics is because the people who did that were all from Philadelphia. The Evans Brothers, the Sims Brothers, B Brother Byers, Reggie Byers. Um, then after that, you got early younger people, Kamau, Mishale, uh, Akinshi Brown, Eric Battle, all from Philadelphia making great work. Uh, Ekbach actually comes from First World Comics made back in 1986. And when I came to Philadelphia for school in 88, I had this as my master's thesis when I finished in 92. But what I did see was that in Philadelphia, although people knew each other, they didn't seem to be connected, but I think they were, because early on, um, Akinshe Brown, Dawood Anyabwile, um, 
Aaron Beatty, I'm missing someone. They had a company called Ogunda Art School, which I found out about about 10 years after that. Um, the same with Ekbak itself. In 1997, those same folks, plus Machindo Kuumba, Carlos Juzang, had a Black Age of Comics East Coast. They had like a round table discussion, and I think they had just won. But I didn't find out, find out about that until about 2006. But the same people who did that were coming to the convention, but I never heard about that until four years later. So there was always people kind of connected to what was happening, but they didn't make it very public because I didn't know about it. I was a grad student. I was searching for people. I um, finally linked up with them. And Professor Foster, who's from Philadelphia, but he, Philadelphia, but he lives in Connecticut. So once I found all of them, I linked them and we were supposed to be having the first convention was going to be a symposium, not a regular convention. So I had no clue. I'm an educator. I had not been to a single convention in my entire life until Ekbot. So in my head, I saw a symposium, people sitting around talking about comic books and what they would do. But it turned out to be a great plan for us to meet Pre and then on 2000, in 2002, May, our first convention. Well, the first Xbox really was the start. Um, it linked all of us and we had the idea to do a, an anthology. We had all the, my, the, the scrap pieces to do it. So that was the first, that was the impetus for everything else. So Xbox ended up being, as you were saying, putting it together as a, a super molecule Everybody came linked to Eggbach. And so people, even from the first convention, folks were talking about doing their own convention. Of course, it would take some time. I think the first Eggbach light convention or Black Age convention was 2009. Um, and that was in the summer. That was um, OnyxCon in Atlanta. And then um, Brother Batch did one in Detroit. Oh, that's the, the Mobach. Motor City, Motor City Black Age of Commerce Convention. So those two came first, and then a whole plethora came after that. So there are about 47 conventions um, from coast to coast and international that come out of what Xbox started. Because although it already was here, most people weren't seeing the importance of black comics. Well, one that, well, Ekbach is special because we focus on the black images. So we have a saying that we don't do black versions of white matters. So we're looking at looking at independent characters that were not carbon copies of the corporate characters that people talked about and wanted to see, so we introduced them through our, our, many of our workshops. Okay, so part of the exhibit is that we have behind me what we call the Ekbach Wall of Firsts. And so we have a whole host of things back here um, that many have actually adopted in their workshops, in their um, conventions, but they start with Ekbach. The Reefer Fun Workbook is the first Black Age anthology that was created. And that was discussed initially the first and second Ekbach, but it didn't come to fruition until 2006-2007. It has stories in it, comic stories, comical stories, um, some grammar, some syntax, some word games, some puzzles, uh, word search. So it's a complete workbook for youth, but anybody can use it. Uh, that was uh, with Nichelle Nichols here. That was the first time that we focused on black women in comics. And so she was the invited guest, and that was great, of course. And then we had as um, a contest, we opened it up to the public to draw my character, Raya Blackmoon. And so the winner was Ashley Woods. Well, she came as a young woman. Um, she came, I think, the first time with her mother, and she came back with the mother and the uncle. But each time she came, she enjoyed herself, she sold out, and she stayed on the course. And now she's gone from just coming out as a young woman with her characters to being part of, not just in the indie world, but also the corporate world of comics. How to Draw Superheroes is our VP's, um, one of his two masterpieces. 
um, and it's the first of its kind, is how to draw African superheroes or how to draw black characters that are not carbon copies. So they, they don't look the same. They come from a particular aesthetic that you can see are as African people. Uh, Xbox serves not just the local community, we serve the international community. So we do things that are of course now online, but initially we went to every library in Philadelphia with our STARS program. And STARS is storytelling that advances reading skills. Basic program using our patented Xbox four panel method um, where you use two, like four panels, and you can make at least a hundred different stories with just, with just four panels. So you have youth and adults who have to put the stories in order, their own sequential order, and then they tell a story. So it's about grammar and syntax, storytelling, and also public speaking. Uh, well, part of Xbox's actual mission came out of us addressing the statutory illiteracy where people were not allowed to read, part, especially African people. So we use this simple format, comic books to teach reading, writing, and counting. And so in Philadelphia, um, the literacy rate is probably still low, but it was like 46% literacy in Philadelphia. That was back in the um, 90s up into the 2000s. So we took these stories, this storytelling technique to all the libraries from Center City to Red Lion Road always were well, well received, always had invites to come back. And so people have even adopted what we were doing in their library systems. We've also been, of course, out of town to Baltimore. Um, the resident Lewis is one of our supporters. Okay, so part of the first two, we introduced Africa's, I think in 2012. And that was African cosplay or Afro cos. Um, the first time people actually had an actual outlet to dress up as a black character, whether corporate or independent. Okay, behind me is part of our wall of first and is an Africa's costume that was made before, of course, Africa's was made and it was made at Dobbins Botec High School here in North Philadelphia. First of a kind, um, it was introduced the same time we had Black Women in Comics with Nichelle Nichols. Um, so that was on display at that convention while she was talking. And then about three years later, four years later, 2000, four years later, 2012, we introduced Africa's as an actual component of Ekbok. Initially, it was gonna be called the Parade of Heroes. Um, but we didn't work it out well in time before we got to 2012. So we introduced Africa's at the TEC in West Philadelphia, the Enterprise Center. Um, and that is a way for people to really use their skills for cosplay, but to have African, African-centered characters in a cosplay parade. Well, folks like Africa's like cosplay in general because it gives them a chance to use what they, what they have as part of their culture. You can come as any kind of African character, black character, pan-African character, of your own making or someone, one that's already established in a comic book. Africa was important because it gave people a sense of coming from themselves. So we have an egg box um, that we don't do black versions of white matters, generally. Um, so you can come as a black character like a fully fleshed out character of your own design or of someone else's design. But you come from your center. You don't always have to be a carbon copy of somebody else's thing. Uh, also, Ekbok introduced three awards in the industry. The first one is the Pioneer Award, um, the PLA, Pioneer Lifetime Achievement Award. And that one is selected by really the public um, and so we, we, there's no vying for it. You submit, people can, anybody can submit a, um, a nomination. We'll review it. If the person belongs as a PLA person, then we'll accept it. Um, that was 2004. And the first one was Samuel Joyner from Philadelphia. He passed recently. Samuel Joyner um, worked for the Tribune. He was a cartoonist. Samuel Joyner drew all different kinds of social commentary. Um, the traditional cartoonist, he was like a satirist. He'd pick out different issues and have just a one-page card, not a one-page, a one-picture cartoon. 
uh, with a point in it, and that would be how he did that at the Tribune and elsewhere. But I met him through working at the Tribune. So the second award was introduced by um, to Egbach by Rich Watson in 2005, um, but we adopted it in 2006. And Rich Watson was a comic book commentator. Um, so he had his own awards called the Glyphs um, that he brought to us. And then we accepted that and we started doing the Glyphs officially in 2006. And the Glyph recognizes uh, about 10 different categories, but anybody who's doing positive images in the industry, black images. Third award is called the Heroica Character Creation Award. And that one is just about introducing new characters, no carbon copies, but it's based on the art. The art has to draw you into the story. And so we had, that started in 2015. So the first winner was 16. We're up to our, fifth, our sixth one. Uh, so what makes a black comic book? Um, the real ones have to do with using a pan-African aesthetic. So it means that people need to know some of the history of African people, not just in the U.S., but around the whole world. Um, and so although we use the, the fist bump and the fist pumps, those different things, that's not about anger. That's about literally feeling that you're about yourself as positive. Um, and the one beh ones behind me are mostly my characters. It's a Petamax. And a Petamax um, AD 2035 is based on the, um, the Nubian deity of Petamek. It's a lion-headed warrior. And so this is a young man um, whose powers come from literally his blood memory called Adamu or Damu. So he gains powers and memories from his ancestors' blood that flows through his body. This, all of these images are really about people coming from their own center. What makes Ekbach a great match for Philadelphia is that Philadelphia is the city of first and Ekbach is that first thing when it comes to blacks and comics. When Professor Foster, William H. Foster III, introduced to me Old Negro Comics, I was thinking of a connection that this is the first black indie comic. We're in the city of first and so we're going to think about doing a first convention which is how Ekbach ended up going. It took about 10 years to get to this point. But from like 1990 up until 2002, a lot of work went in between that. And so the more history I did looking at Philadelphia, it was a great fit. It's like first, 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 first. First museum, first library, um, first hospital, first White House. Everything is right here. And we introduced the first black comic convention in Philadelphia. And what we're looking forward to for Ekbach in the future is really more of the same, just a bit broader. So we've had about 47 conventions that were inspired by Ekbach and not just the black ones, just in general. Um, folks have looked at our model um, and they actually like what they saw. We have a very family oriented con um, con um, convention. Uh, when you come to Ekbach, it feels just like a reunion every single year. All different kinds of people are here. And so we look at it, keeping it like it is, but just growing it in terms of how people perceive these black superheroes. And especially the indie com comic superheroes. We want people to look at and be inspired by indie black superheroes. Um, and we always say at Ekbak, Ekbak Sikuzote, Ekbak Forever. <laughs>